Brian Welch is with the rock band Corn, and a couple of weeks ago, him and his daughter were supposed to be with us and share a little bit about their journey of faith. Things changed, but delays are not denials, and they'll be with us again in the future. But Brian was gracious enough to send to us a very special message for the Bay Area that talks about his own journey and the fresh start that God gave to him. What's up, San Jose and uh, Cathedral of Faith? Me and my daughter, Jenea, looked forward to coming and seeing you guys in person, but we got shut down. Can you believe it? I know we are all going through the same thing, but stay up, all right? Stay positive because Jesus is going to bring us through this. I want to tell you my story real quick. I grew up in Bakersfield, California, home of Buck Owens and Hee Haw Country Music. I hated it. My parents were into it. I rebelled and got into metal, Ozzy Osbourne, and all these crazy bands. Um, I met the guys in Corn. Um, I met the singer in fourth grade, bass player in seventh, guitar player in ninth grade, and uh, we went and formed Corn in Los Angeles. Why Corn? Because people would either hate it or love it, but they wouldn't forget it. So uh, we got signed. And uh, on our first album's tour, we were opening for Ozzy Osbourne. It was crazy. Dreams came true. But the dream that I didn't dream about was being addicted to drugs, being an alcoholic, drinking every day and feeling sick and having to, to drink and do drugs to feel normal again. And it went on for years, you know. Um, in our addiction, we, got, we all got married. Five guys, five marriages five divorces within two or three years. I ended up with custody of my daughter, Jenea, who you will meet. But, uh, you know, I thought I could get sober on my own when I got full custody of her. It lasted four months, but I couldn't stay sober. Um, I got massively hooked on drugs and crystal meth was my worst. Um, it got so bad that I did a world tour, went to Asia and uh, South America, Europe with crystal meth in my bags. I ran out, had my dealer send me two eight balls. And that's when I was like, okay, I've gone too far. My parents raised me better. And so uh, I went home, I tried to go to outpatient rehab, talk to uh, doctors and I just couldn't get free from it, man. And But I was the most functioning tweaker speed addict you'd ever meet. I was doing real estate deals while being a rock star. And uh, these two guys, man, brought me to church. And uh, I thought Christians were like Ned Flanders and I didn't want to hang out with them, but these guys were cool. They were my business partners. And I went and I discovered that Jesus is actually real. The pastor got up and he said, look, all of your junk, all of your baggage that you're dealing with, if you come to Jesus and keep talking to him and learning about him, None of that stuff can stay in your life. It will fall away and you will become a new creation. And so I, I didn't believe, I don't want to believe the Christians. I wanted to see for myself if it was real. I'm not getting brainwashed. You know, I started thinking. So I went home and I, and I, I prayed and I said, Jesus, look, man, if you're real, then you got to set me free from these drugs because my daughter deserves a better father. I'm a loser. If you're real, show me. And long story short, you guys, within like three weeks, I was going to church high on drugs. I was reading the Bible high. And and uh, about three weeks later, I felt a love pour into me and an embrace like come around me spiritually. I don't know. I can't explain it. There's a scripture that says Romans in Romans uh, 5, it says that God has poured his spirit and his love into our hearts. And so I felt that, you know, and uh, I was I was instantly like just taken back and that was a better high than any drug I've ever done. And so I, I threw away the drugs. I stopped drinking. I stopped doing drugs right away. Started going to church. I left the band, you know, and uh, everyone freaked out and thought I was a Jesus freak, but I needed to do this for me. But, uh, you know, in Jesus Christ, as we step into him by faith and ask him to come and live in us, in Jesus, our broken, chaotic, and just you know, hurting human experiences made whole again. I promise you, it's been 15 years and I'm a new creation. I'm a new creature. Everything has been brand new, man. And and uh, I promise you, if you just step in, trust him, ask him to show you he's real, he'll do it for you too. 
Jesus is the first and the last. And this can be the first day of the rest of your life. Maybe you would say, Ken, I've heard about Jesus. I know about Jesus, but I've never stepped across the line and become a follower of Jesus. Every journey starts with a step and you can take that step right now by praying this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my savior. I surrender my life to you. Thank you for loving me like you do and making me a part of your family. If you prayed that prayer, well, you just started a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And you may wonder, well, what next? Well, here are three things you can do. Start to pray. Pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Start to read a Bible. Begin with the four gospels, the four biographies that talk about the life of Jesus. And then plug into a local church after the crisis passes, and it will pass. There are great churches and pastors all around the Bay Area. 